Today we're going to be talking about information retrieval. And information retrieval is the technical academic way of referring to search engines, like, say, Google. And as you may have gathered, Google made its money on the back of its search engine and thus on the back of information retrieval. So information retrieval is of vital economic importance. And if you look at the major websites of the world, i.e. what website is most visited in any particular country, most of the world is dominated by search engines. So Google throughout most of the world, Yandex in Russia, Baidu in China, Yahoo in Japan, uh, Facebook in uh, the Middle East and North Africa. With the exception of Facebook, all of these are search engines. And countries like China have realized that search engines are so important that they have created their own national champions and protected them and made sure that they are entrenched as say, the primary website that people visit in China. So why are search engines so important? Search engines connect people with information. And information or knowledge is equated as power in many cases. So search engines in the internet age are the source of a lot of power. We're talking about information retrieval very early in the course because it's relatively simple to understand. Although if you talk to any of the people at the uh, companies like Yandex and Baidu that I mentioned, it's not easy. There are huge engineering challenges, but to create a simple search engine is relatively simple from a conceptual perspective, and, and we'll talk about that today. But despite the inherent, at least surface level, simplicity of information retrieval, it is vitally important to the world, both in terms of knowledge, dissemination of information, and in, in terms of uh, raw money and power. But very specifically to the sorts of things that I'm interested in, like question answering, information retrieval is a key component of other natural language processing tools and applications. So one of the things that we'll see is that information retrieval is a very useful tool to have in your toolbox to find a bunch of information that may have the answers that you're looking for, bring them to a smarter algorithm that can hopefully read it and to understand what's going on in these articles and to produce a, an intelligent answer. Specifically for this course, you'll be using information retrieval to find some interesting documents and then for your course project, try to extract the correct answer out of them. So before we get into the nuts and bolts, let's talk about some of the vocabulary that information retrieval researchers use. We'll be talking about documents. That's relatively straightforward. These are the individual web pages or documents, articles that you'll be trying to search over. And a user comes in and they give a query. And those query can have search terms and you try to match those search terms to terms in the documents. And terms can often be thought of as synonymous with words. Uh, this is certainly true in English. It's less true in other languages. We'll kind of gloss over that detail for the moment, but we'll use search term instead of word just to keep that distinction a little bit clearer. The general problem is that users will create queries that don't necessarily have the same terms as what's in the original documents. And so the user might type in tragic romance, Shakespeare might have written star-crossed lovers. How do you find that query in the correct document? Well, I said that we'll be glossing over the distinction between term and word. I, I want to pause just a little bit before we do gloss over it to make sure that uh, you realize that this is not a trivial problem. In English, it's relatively easy to figure out where one word ends and another begins. You look for the space or the punctuation separating them. In other languages like Chinese, Japanese, or Korean, it's harder to figure out where one word ends and another begins. They don't necessarily write with spaces. so. 
if you want to do this on a computer, you need to figure out where one word ends and another one begins. Other languages like Hebrew or Arabic don't always write all the information that you need to figure out what a word is. They leave out important information like, say, the vowels. And if you're trying to do this on a computer, you need to figure out what the vowels are. Other languages like Turkish or Finnish have very complicated rules for creating the words that you see based on its context. And so if a noun is the subject of a particular kind of verb with a particular kind of object, it will have different endings and the words will change. And so the terms that you would want to use in a search engine would remove all of that superfluous information and would return only the key term that you should search for. And so given all of these complications, we're relatively fortunate to be focusing on English, which is in comparison a relatively simple and straightforward language to work with computationally. But keep these complications in mind, especially if you ever want to work with one of these other more interesting languages. A key assumption that's relatively common in information retrieval is something called the bag of words assumption. Particularly when you're just trying to find relevant documents, you don't necessarily care about the context that terms appear in. And as a result, we will just take a document, find all the terms that appear in that document, and count up how many times they appear. This is horribly simplistic and a totally boneheaded thing to do, but it often works and makes the engineering challenges of information retrieval a little bit more tractable. Early approaches for information retrieval use something called Boolean retrieval. So for example, let's say that you're trying to find information on the Bank of China, and you want to find documents that contain bank and China, but not river, because bank could refer to either a financial institution or the geographical feature next to a river. After a user creates such a query, you can then find all of the documents where that Boolean expression results to true. And then you have a set of documents. The user has to then sift through all of those documents to find the one that they're interested in. So often in the bad old days where this was the norm, and I'm old enough to remember this, you would start with a the query, then you'd realize, oh no, I got all these irrelevant documents that that are talking about Dolly Parton. Okay, so let me add that to my query to make sure that I remove those things. And, and then you finally whittle it down until you get like 20 or so documents that you as a human can actually sort through. And then you find the thing that you're actually interested in. So this took forever, it was annoying, and uh, we suffered through it, but today we're living in a much better world. So let's drill down a little bit more into the strengths and weaknesses of Boolean-based retrieval. So on the plus side, it's really precise. There's no fuzziness to it. Either a page matches the query or it doesn't. And if you know the document that you're looking for, you can find it. It may take a while, but you can find it. And this was really useful for being able to find pages that you've seen before or you had a good idea of what's in them. The downside is that it required you to learn some really complex syntax to write your queries. And for people who were interested in computers and understood Boolean logic, this was okay. You could do it and uh, it was maybe even a little bit fun, but it wasn't very accessible to the general public. And on the plus side, these approaches were really fast. You could implement them very quickly and you could get results very quickly. The downside was that often you were inundated with responses. And if you had 20,000 relevant documents, you had to sort through this huge set and that was just impossible. The other extreme is that you'd get zero results. Nothing would be relevant and you didn't get a hint like if you change this term, you might get some more documents. And so this is a case where partial matches would be really helpful that if there was some document that just barely failed the query, that that would be included. And you could look at that and maybe that would give you ideas of how to improve your query so that you would get the right number of documents. But I think the most damning
shortfall of these methods was they didn't provide a ranking of the results. And ideally, what you would want is that even if you got 20,000 results, you could look at the first result and that would be the best shot that the computer had at answering your question. But Boolean results don't let you do that. And what we'll talk about next is how we can create rank results by creating scoring functions that take a query and take a document and then find the most relevant documents given that query.